This song is called Be the Change. Inspired by the words of Mahatma Gandhi, who lived for peace and not violence, and told us to be the change we wish to see in the world. Oh, man, here we are. Ramon and Tom and the 100th Monkey Radio. We are recording this on June 3rd, 2013. And uh, here in Western Washington, uh, despite the gorgeous blue sky that's been nice and clear most of the day today, I just looked up, what do you know? I got a freaking chemtrail right across my window. Uh, and I just looked out and saw that. It's been gorgeous here, though. Uh, looks like uh, we're finally getting some uh, decent weather after several weeks of drenching rain that uh, yellowed all my tomato plants and uh, I, I think they're going to survive this time though not like last year last year was, was kind of rough on them uh, I, when I planted they they uh, got drowned out completely and I mean you know I like to get I'd like to get my garden in as soon as I possibly can because there's nothing like eating right out of your own garden and Last year, I got uh, we had a uh, about a two week spell in, towards the end of April, and I put my garden in. And no sooner than I had it all in, than the skies opened and it poured for like three weeks straight. And I ended up having to completely replant. But but this year things are looking good. My garden's all in. Things seem to be growing pretty good. And uh, as a, I kind of see, uh, I'm, I'm looking at my garden and looking at the reflection of my garden out in the world, and I'm seeing that uh, a lot of things are moving and shaking out there right now, Ramon. We've got uh, a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, you know, speaking uh, before I go into the uh, news section, I um, went to this, this new... Um, department store opened up it's more like a, a home depot kind of place and they had a lot of you know uh, corn and uh, tomatoes and many things to, to plant so i brought some stuff i didn't buy the tomatoes and i didn't buy the corn but i brought uh, more herbs and planted that and uh, a couple of bamboos but i'm thinking of you know Bam I don't bamboo oh the the little ones uh window yeah. type bamboos yeah 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 to put it next to my desk over here uh, have something green to look at um but i'm thinking of planting corn in just a big pot so that might be interesting uh yeah. corn and potatoes hey, you're jones in for a yard aren't you yeah but you know uh that's what Gorilla Gardening is all about. So speaking of, um, I think I'm going to buy some of the extra corn and tomatoes and plant them out in those uh, empty lots and stuff like that. Do your Gorilla Gardening? I think I'm going to change it to like Ninja Gardening. <laughs> go late night. Uh, so, so you'll actually go in and, and actually plant them instead of drive by and bomb them? Yeah, I think right now I'm going to plant those and I'm thinking uh, as soon as my... Um, user tree has some users take the seeds from that and uh, do I, I haven't seen any emails from anybody doing any gorilla gardening yet have you uh, no not yet but uh, if you guys are doing gorilla gardening um, oh sure man you, you know guys uh, especially you guys uh, inner city guys so uh, yeah, come on guys this is some awesome stuff I mean just think about it you know uh, make yourself a, you get to get out and uh, 
uh, take yourself back to your childhood and play in the mud pie and build yourself a, 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 a seed bomb with your mud pie and, and just drive by and toss them into those vacant lots and see what happens. I mean, it, this, this, is, this is such an excellent idea. I and mean, we're, we're, we're constantly talking about, about uh, sustainable futures, you know, and about growing your own food. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's just such a great idea. I mean, yeah. And, you know, speaking of uh, one of the news, this is one of the main reasons why I think we should be doing guerrilla gardening. Um, 800 scientists demand a global GMO experiment uh, to end. And this is 800 different scientists from all over and different kinds that are completely against uh, the whole but GMO. Is there asking for the GMO experiment to end? Is that what you said? Yeah. Oh, so sure. they're calling all this stuff that Monsanto and, and associated companies are doing an experiment? I would say so because, for example, you have, uh, like I spoke, uh, I think last week I mentioned about the um, the trout fish that somehow, right. you know, they call it the brown trout, which is a GMO fish that somehow escaped into the water. Uh, because most of the tanks are on land, so he just like walked some legs and flip flopped a couple of uh, miles over to the ocean. Um, and then the uh, wheat, the experimental wheat that escaped as well and, and started um, growing in other people's gardens and stuff like that. Well, I, t- I, I don't really consider it an experiment as if they're out in mass production. You know, experiments to me are done in labs. Whether or not stuff gets out, that's you know oh. a completely another story. Well, Tom, we are the experiment. Uh, yeah, I suppose I'm on level. I suppose you I'm know, level. you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, that's it for the news for today so far. And you well, we, find- we did a couple of things that are happening uh, right now. The Bradley Manning trial finally started, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's about time. You know, the guy's been in jail for three years. And, uh, you know, of course, there's all the, the people, the Bradley Manning supporter, supporters that are there, you know, with their picket signs, et cetera, and, and uh, doing what they can to support him. You know, it, they, everybody, that group's seeing him as, uh, you know, just a whistleblower, somebody that was uh, trying to uh, shed some light on, on what's really going on with our military and, and how it's being conducted in the on the world stage you know so me me personally i respect him completely with what he did you know i the, there was nothing out of the information that he did release that that caused any uh issues with military operations so Besides the fact that they were going, uh oh, we're going to have to watch our P's and Q's now. You know, we just can't blow all the journalists up like we, you know. Uh, <laughs> anyways, anyways, off of that and on to something uh, a little bit brighter. <laughs> oh, right. I'm sorry, I went away for a second there. Okay, well, let's get let's go ahead and uh, get our guest going tonight. Uh, we're I'm I'm pretty excited to have this gentleman on. He's uh, done some amazing work. Uh, we've got James Olson with us. Uh, he is an uh, integral philosopher whose studies have included business, engineering, art, Eastern and Western religion, language, psychology, and brain perspective. Olson's traveled extensively throughout Europe, lived in Austria, France, Germany, and attended Oklahoma State University, the University of Vienna, Oklahoma University, University of Missouri at Kansas, and the Kansas City Art Institute. He holds a degree in business administration and is currently studying sacred geometry and the experience of living in the heart. As a per- practicing philosopher, Olson has worked most of his life to unify his understanding of material things, ideas, and spiritual energies by embracing concepts that are in harmony with one another and, when justifiable, eliminating those that create conflict. A former church deacon and farmer, as well as a state and national winner in 4-H, Olson starts with a core of conservative farm 
and Christian values. And into that, he integrates the complementary perspectives of Eastern religion, the liberal perspectives of Europe, the wisdom of ancient Egypt, the facts of science, the disciplines of business, and the unique spiritual insights offered by modern revelation. Following the unifying guidelines of philosophy and drawing on his wide-ranging education, Olson has made it his mission to help bring the planet's masculine and feminine energy into greater balance, and therefore into more peaceful state, through his advocacy of whole brain thinking. His website is www.thewholebrainpath.com, and I would urge you guys to pop on over there, if you would, while we are chatting, and uh, take a look at his material. He's got, got a lot of stuff there. Welcome to the 100th Monkey Radio, James. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, so uh, before we got started, uh, you, you happened to mention a couple of uh, landmark achievements that your book has done. Would you like to share that with our audience? Well, uh, sure. It's, it's, not, it's new enough. It's not even on my website, but uh, the, the uh, 2013 International Book Awards uh, sponsored by USA uh, Book News uh, were announced, and, and I, I, the book had been entered in three categories because it's kind of a broad-based book. It was entered, and it won uh, in uh, self-help general. It won in the philosophy category, and it was a finalist in the social change category. So that was so, you know, I'm really stoked about that. That that is just awesome, and and uh, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. That is that's quite yeah, a feat. That's, that's, that's quite a feat. Was is this your first book? Uh, it's the first book that I've that I've written. Yeah, I, I edited a book, uh, uh, a couple of books once, but yeah, this is the first one I've written. It took me forever. I, I I'm an idealist, a perfectionist, and I and I just I I actually went through three. I spent uh, 19 years uh, writing four books, and I threw the first three away because I wasn't satisfied with them. And then, not finally, on the fourth try, I I managed to be content with what I had, and and I'm still pleased with it. And, and I guess the the words show that I was right to to hang on to to keep plodding on. I I would have never spent that much time if I'd have known. When I start out, it was going to be that arduous a process, but you know, you you get so far, and you're embarrassed to turn back and quit, and so you just have to keep going. And there's a lot of things in life for that way, I guess. Yeah, I've been working on a book myself for quite a few years, and uh, it seems like every time I get something uh, something written down, and and where I think it's just you know that that looks good, you know, it sounds good. Uh, you know, a month or two will go down, and I'll reread it, and I'll go, oh, well, now I have a different perspective. <laughs> yeah, that's like, happened to me many times. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's, that's all right. Yeah, that's the uh, that, that's a hazard of growing while you're writing, right? Yeah, that is. So, uh, uh, let's ahead. go. Let's go back and uh, learn a little bit about uh, who who Mr. James Olson is, and. Uh, uh, from from your bio, I take it that you had you had a uh, uh, a Christian upbringing, and you've had uh, uh, a, a form of faith in your life uh, through through the whole thing, right? Uh, yes, yes, I was raised in a in a uh, very Christian community, and and two two families my my mother's family and my father's family, so it was just a natural natural process. Um, and, and it uh, helps me to understand, uh, the, especially especially not just the Christian, but the whole conservative uh, community I belong to has, has helped me to uh, better understand. We, there's really it, we live in a dualistic world, and it's it's divided up in many ways, or if, if not more than two. But uh, we we tend to latch on to one or the other and and fail to see to expand our perspective and uh, I was fortunate fortunate enough to um, to get to go to Vienna for a semester uh, in my sophomore year at, at school and 
uh, it really changed my 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 worldview and, and opened me up to new new ways of thinking and and so that that background forms a, a very stable uh, basis for 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 exploring the world and then I went out and as a result of that and and really got hungry to, to see what was out there and and uh and I and I have I kinda of have a diverse interest. My my brain, you know, I, I'm both I'm really left brain dominant but but I have a strong right brain component and in, in, in the right brain uh is so the world is so immense you just can't learn everything that that's out there that interests you sometimes. Right, right. So so what was it that actually prompted you to start putting this down on paper back there 20 years ago? Well, I, I couldn't, I had, a, I was having a difficult time expressing myself verbally. Uh, and it had, it's like I had something within me that, that had to get out and, and I couldn't express it, uh, in, in any other way except writing. I guess it was too complex or, or I just didn't understand it well enough at that time to express myself, and, and I just felt this need to to write. Mm -hmm. So, and so I so I go ahead. Oh, uh, that's what I said. Go ahead. <laughs> it sounded like you oh, started on okay. something. Well, I I had been so I'd been writing this book and. It, it was really about uh, the process we we go through in searching for truth and how we get tricked and 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 having some pointers and and then I went to a weekend workshop in which a neuroscientist from the University of Texas mapped the brains of the participants uh, to show how left brain or how right brain they were or how balanced they were. And uh, as a result of that workshop, I became intrigued with, with the effect the brain was having on my perception of the reality, on, on the way I was exploring reality, because the left brain and the right brain are very different. And uh, we tend to be left brain or right brain dominant. You know, you, I guess we'd like to think we're all balanced and we we have good access to both sides of our brain, but we're we're born most of us are born left brain or right brain with the left or right brain dominating our decision making it's like one is the one brain takes over and uses the other one as an assistant and so we can get stuck in that right brain or or left brain thinking and, and uh your your left brain is primarily the rational brain the calculator correct yes yeah. yeah, the science, the science brain, the brain that looks into things. One of the things we've known about the left brain is it's analytical. And what analytical means is that it takes things apart uh, in order to see to see what's what's inside, to see what makes it tick. And the right brain, being the complement of that, assembles reality, assembles ideas, things. Uh, into to a greater whole, to ever ever greater wholeness. As we as we expand, or as the left brain feeds us information, the right brain takes that information and unifies it, and expands the whole of our knowledge. Uh, Ramon, did I hear you? Uh, yeah, I was trying to hit the mute button. Um, with the with the right brain and the left brain, um, it seems always like people either you're going to be right brain, so you're going to be more creative, or you're going to be left brain, you know, more analytical, and it never seems like in our society that both of them could work together. It's always this battle, and I never understood why they just can't work together, um, and it's. It seems that society um, keeps it that way. If you're you're either going to be right brain or left brain, you can't be both. So I guess guess the question out of that, Ramon, is uh, the question you're trying to to fish is uh, does our society promote one over the other? 
Well, our, yes, our society definitely promotes one over the other as a whole, or in general, it promotes the left brain perspective because that's the male perspective, and and we males uh, naturally build our institutions uh, as we see them, from, which is from a left brain perspective. So we, in effect, teach uh, women. We teach everyone, men and women, to to see reality from a left brain perspective. Uh, and that's really the the reason I, I wrote this book because I I saw that's what was happening that that our society was very left brain in, in its fundamental ways of of dealing with things its government for example and that we were really in trouble because of this because we we need the the right brain perspective it sees the big picture it puts the parts together and it's and it's every bit as valuable as the left brain and when you get stuck in a left brain perspective you can get kind of stuck in a focus and fail to see other important parts of the, of the problem you can you know, like on the drug war you just focus on eradicating the, the drug problem or the the abuse problem but in doing that you're creating other problems uh, through the drug war and, and, and from a left brain perspective you don't always see that and the left brain also acts out of fear and so when we get scared uh, we're in our left brain and we, and, and we start looking for left brain solutions and there's really a lot to be scared about in our society because it's so messed up and, and we're, we're in this we're really in this left brain dominance of culture that this is shifting that this part of the, the new age the, right. the age of Aquarius and there are a lot of people working on this uh, in one way or another trying to promote left brain ideas and, and, and the feelings and concepts I mean right brain the, the holistic the feminine perspective and, and the, the right brain perspective is the, the feminine perspective because it's it's the it's the side of the brain that most women use, the right side, and the things that the right brain sees and the way they respond or the way that we stereotypically associate with women. And uh, so we, the, uh, another way of looking at the left and the right brain is the left brain gives us the male perspective and the right brain uh, gives us the, the feminine perspective, and, and we we all ha- use both of these, but one or the other, again one or the other tends to dominate, and in some cases uh, it will they, they are in a in a battle. You know, part of your question. Let me let me take a drink here. Yes, part of your question was uh, about the conflict. Uh, why why they can't get along or why yeah I think you you said something uh, Ramon about them not being able to get along and uh, Roger Sperry won a Nobel Prize for medicine in 1981 for his discovery that the the two hemispheres were so different that they were actually in conflict with one another there was a conflict between the way they they saw reality. Now we know now, if not then, that that they're actually a a pair. They're 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 complements. They they work together. But still, the universe is so vast in in the, the extremes of of the the left brain linear view and the right brain holistic view are so vast and different that they they seem like they're in conflict with each other they they present different views of reality and if you really understand the two views you can see how they how they nest and work together but if, if you don't especially and especially if you're left brain dominant the typical the typical male uh it's hard to understand and with our culture being so left brain dominant and teaching the left brain perspective and not teaching us about the right brain view, uh, left brain people tend to not understand the right brain, so they don't know how to integrate it. 
and we tend to fear <clears throat> fear of what we don't understand. Right. So there's also a resistance there, and so the 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 conflict comes from the fact that the left brain is is polar and the right brain is nonpolar. Mm. And polar when you look at polar substance, substances we see that there are polar molecules and nonpolar molecules. And polar molecules are water, for example, and everything that dissolves in water and Nonpolar molecules are oil and everything that dissolves in oil. And so when you try to integrate polar and nonpolar physical substances, there's, there's, a, there's a resistance, just, just like trying to mix oil and water. Right. You know, you can shake them up real good, and there, there are ways of doing this, or, or they may layer, but, but there, there's a resistance to that integration. And what I see is that the same thing is happening at the, the level of mind. There are, there are polar ideas, and there are non-polar ideas, and if they're not complete enough, they, there, there's a resistance to the integration of, of polar ideas and non-polar ideas. Right. And so that's where, the, that's where this conflict comes in. And so the, the two brains, there's a tension between the two brains. And it is our jobs as individual, unique creators to take these two streams of information, these two, you know, one polar and non-polar, and integrate them uh, and that that's determines who we are. That determines the ideas. That makes us unique. The the way we we combine these these two uh, diverse sources. So anyway, that's get get back to your question. That's where the the conflict originates between the the, the polar polar the polar nature and the nonpolar nature of the two hemispheres of the brain. So I. Uh... You know, one thing I, I personally have noticed uh, in my own inner work as I, I dig up those things that are hidden in the shadow, you know, the, those I've noticed that uh, and and uh, let me back up a second. OK, in my own personal inner work, I'll I'll take an issue and uh, and these issues arise from uh, my interactions in the world. Uh, so I'll, I'll have a, a, uh, some kind of a, a, uh, a dialogue with somebody and I will have what I term as a reactive response and where it's, uh, something sets me off, uh, the, the, the annoyance or the anger or, or something along those lines that an uncomfortable feeling is associated with whatever my response, my reactive response was. Now, I, I do what I call throwing up flags. So I throw up a flag at that, and I take that out, and I look at that, that situation and, that, and what it was that created that reaction and try to, try to dig down and find the source of it uh, and find out whether or not it was a, a, a true response or if this was something that just comes out of my uh, programming and conditioning throughout the my life here on this planet now that reactive response is would would you say that that reactive response is more of a left brain function or or could it be a right brain function also well i i, I, would, I wouldn't want to say that it couldn't be right brain but i would say that yes it would tend to be right uh, left brain because the left brain is is the brain that looks for conflict uh, whereas the right brain is the brain that looks for unity, mm. they're always they're always a pair this, this way. They they work together, and the left brain is always also our security brain, and so it's it's looking for dangers. Uh, it's, it's 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 the left brain's job to take care of us, to take care of our of our of our body, our daily interactions on on this planet. And so, yeah, the, I'd say it was uh, mostly, I'd say that was the left brain. Mm, so that that's covers all the fight and flight responses and all that sort of thing, right? Yes. 
Yeah, you know, one of the um, things that I've noticed too is this. Um, well, at least in the Western philosophy, because in the Eastern philosophy, there's a lot of exercises to bring the two together. And what I've noticed is it's almost like, um, I guess for lack of a better word, it's it's more like a buffer. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, when you look, for example, at two parallel lines, um, your, your both sides of the brain can work on that equally but when you look at an X it's kind of hard for the brain and one of the ways you can test this out is to um, kine um, kinesiology so if you're if you're not used to using both sides of the brain then uh, are you are you familiar with kinesiology Yes. Are you talking about the a test? Or, yeah. Right. Well, yes. yes. I mean, yeah. In general, yes. Well, uh, one way to to see if you are um, if you're a person that uses only one side or you use both sides, and that's one one aspect. Well, I always assume that we all use everyone uses both sides. It's just that uh, one side or the other seems is the non-dominant brain and it's kind of like the advisor and the dominant brain may or may not accept uh, its advice and that's especially true of the, of the left brain which wants to be in control and and uh, and has limited perspective the right brain on the other hand and right brain dominant people are are more open. The, the, the right brain sees the the enormity of the university of the universe and understands that there are many ways of doing things and and is open to novelty, open to surprise. Whereas the, the left brain is is not so much open and, and really wants to be in control. So 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 again, back to my point. Especially if you're left brain dominant, you're not. Uh, your resistance to 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 integrating and, and to the wholeness, um, uh, whereas if you're right brain dominant, you're more uh, it it you're you're much more likely to to embrace what your what your left brain if you're right brain dominant, you're much more open to embrace what the left brain is telling you, even if it kind of goes against. Your, your normal ways of seeing things or doing things. But if you're a left brain, a typical male, the, you're kind of scared of the feminine perspective and, and you, you, you tend to resist it and, and not understand it. Well, yeah, that's why I brought up the whole idea of the Eastern um, philosophy uh, point of view of looking at it where they um consistently doing exercise to, to make it more like a a one brain kind of thing and um, what a lot of them would explain is you after doing um, several of these exercises for a while you start growing like a, not growing but like a buffer starts building in the middle where both sides are start working easier it's almost like um, back to the analogy of water and oil and just that middle line where they're mixing perfect and that starts to um, thicken and where it makes us more yeah yes uh, so, so are you I'm not uh, sure have, I understand have you, it. have you seen have you heard of anything like that during the um, from the East, Eastern philosophy point of view or well y yes but, but I'm not always sure where they come from but there's there's a, an exercise where you you See, you see an infinity sign in in the third eye area, and you and you can and you to you perfect it by running the lines around each you know in both directions and and trying to uh, to make both sides of the of the, of the infinity equal. Um, is, is that is that another is that what you mean? Another example. Yeah. Another, yeah, like the X, that's one. Another one is two circles, one with a horizontal, one with a um, parallel line. And then you look at in the middle in between them and they bring them both together. 
Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Or another one would be the uh, hemi, the whole hemi sync thing, where you get yes. two different audio sounds. Yeah. And I I have focused uh, more on the the mind aspect. You know, it's almost unfortunate we we think so much in terms of of the brain, and, and there's a confusion between what the brain is and the mind. But the the brain is a physical organ, and and the mind is another type of energy. Uh, that intervenes between the physical and the spiritual, and and there's a communication, you know, and and thought-based energy, uh, and so and I try to focus on on the mind part, and I uh, have had people talk about various exercises, and I think that's that's these are all fine, um, but I haven't explored them in any detail. Because I, my, my thought is that there are polar ideas and there are non-polar ideas, and and I'm not sure that you know, I I can't see in my own mind how doing one of these exercises can help you necessarily integrate a a polar idea and a non-polar idea if you don't understand them. I think we have to understand the nature of of, uh, of the ideas look for conflict within the ideas like Tom was talking about earlier that he, he when he when he would have some conflict uh, he would put up a red flag and then he would explore that and that's kind of the approach that that I propose is that uh, that we see these conflicts within our within our ideology, which is really our programming, right. and and this conf and we are we are the universe makes us aware of the conflict within our ideas within our philosophy, and it does this by raising these conflicts, raising these red flags, uh, and when we're you know advanced like you guys are you you pay attention to that a lot of people don't don't they they see these red they they have these conflicts and they want to ignore it. they want to get away from it they want to shut the person up that is is uh creating the conflict rather than recognize this as a signal that they have a conflict that they need to resolve right. and so Again, my point is I, I think we need to – that there are lots of exercises out there, but nobody's talking about the the exercise of looking at your ideas and, and resolving the conflict within them. And, and so that's kind of my focus. You know, I kind of see the the whole uh, the whole human body, the whole the the whole material form that we we are inhabiting. Uh, you know, the whole car analogy is a excellent because you know, okay, so I've got a car, and uh, you know, I can just let it uh, uh, just drive it around and not do any maintenance on it, not tune it up, not uh, put air in the tires. Uh, you know, I got to put fuel in it, so I eat three times a day. Uh, you know, you know, you can you can just drive the car until it drops, or you can really take good care of the car. You can do a tune-ups on it. You can, you know, new tires. You can do, you can do all these nice little fancy little things with your car, and get it running in tip-top shape. Now, when I look at the brain, using that analogy, when I look at the brain, uh, these exercises that 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 we're talking about here. Uh, that's basically what I'm. I see as uh, that we're doing with the brain with these exercises is we're just basically we're we're creating the pathways. We're creating a uh, a, a, a a more efficiently running machine to so that when we get into it, when we do bring that mind essence in there, that spirit essence in there, that we have all the. Uh, all the material uh, functions uh, working accurately, working correctly, and we're able to to use our vehicle to the best of our ability. 
uh, you know, so like I, when I do brain exercises, I have one that just came to me, oh, geez, must have been 20 years ago now. And, and it was just basically a, a, a very simple exercise of just a, a creative a, a visualization of seeing my brain and, and flowing energy from side to side, you know, and, and that just that ener- that uh, exercise itself, I personally felt that it did me a, a tremendous amount of good uh, for, uh, you know, opening up those uh, the, the pathways between the two sides of the brain to help me to uh, actually have a little bit better uh, or, or more uh, tools in my bag that I'm able to use when I do come up with those conflicts that I need to resolve for myself. Yeah, that, that's a beautiful explanation uh, of, the, of, the, of how the two approaches uh, complement one, one another. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, everything, anything we can do, we need to do. Every, if my my approach to life is to when I have a problem, I just do everything I can possibly do. Sometimes there's there's kind of a downfall to that. I don't always know which thing works. Sometimes when I have multiple <laughs> approaches, but I, oh, I uh, don't. Don't we all I, know that one? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I I I've gone down a, a more than one dead end. I'll tell you. Oh, so, so let's uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, jump into the book a little bit. I want to, uh, you know, just just some of the things in there that I'd I'd like to get out to the listeners so that they kind of get a, an idea of, of what they will be looking at when they buy your book. Uh, you start off with uh, the first first part, uh, universal fundamentals, and and the first chapter I think uh, you called it, uh, "We Are Gods." Yes. Uh, would you care to uh, uh, expand on that for us a little bit? Well, it's it's somewhat interesting in that when I set out to write this book, I was going to leave God out of it. I was going to just make it scientific because that uh, the bringing God in sometimes alienates people. And, and especially to put it right in the front of the book, I thought, you know, no way. But, but as I started writing this uh, uh, well, actually, I was writing a a, a creative nonfiction version. Uh, this part of why it took me so long to write this book. I was going to make it uh, kind of model it on on the, the style of Zen, the art of motorcycle maintenance. Oh yeah. And so so I had uh, so I had one of the characters uh, say to the other, "Namaste," meaning. Uh, you know, I, I recognize, I acknowledge and, and greet the, the God that is within us, uh, within you. And uh, so from that, it just, it's just almost like automatic writing. Just, uh, I ended up with a whole chapter on on God, and, and I didn't understand why at first, but eventually I realized that the, the right hemisphere of our brain is basically the God brain. It gives us the, the type of perspective that God has. Of course, it's greatly limited, you know, relative to God's, obviously, but, but it's that type in that it, it's holistic. It sees everything as one. It sees everything in, in oneness. It takes all of the information our left brain gives us, and it puts it into one big picture. And that's why it's called the big picture brain. And... Um, so, um, one of the one of the things that happens sometimes uh, when you go into the left brain, you get into details, uh, and you lose the big picture, and you you fail to see what you're missing, and. Uh, Sometimes, and this is what happens to an absent-minded professor. They'll, they're they're on a subject, and they start talking, and all of a sudden they say, well, "How where did I get here?" And, and that happens to all of us at certain times. We 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 trail off and and we lose our train of thought. And I bring this up because that's just what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. I've been there and done that more times than I care to admit. I didn't get your question answered. I, I missed. Uh, uh... Oh, 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 no worries. Uh, Ramon, 
I hear you about in the background there. Oh no, I was just wondering if you remember your question. No, I, I don't know. We we were t we were just uh, uh, kind of uh, just talking about the first chapter. Uh, we are gods. Oh yes, we are gods. Yes. So anyway, so so that that's what the right the right brain is this this god like perspective. It, because the right brain sees everything at once and it processes information uh, simultaneously, uh, which is through in intuition, you know, a, fla a flash of information comes to us. We call that intuition, but it's it's just information that's that's given to us as a whole, as opposed to the left brain way of getting information, which is uh, sequentially. You know, you 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 build you build ideas, and whereas the left brain processes them. So so because because I you know, had had tried to figure out why this had come into the book. I was really able to to see this that this the the God, actually God nature of, of the right brain, um, as opposed to the left brain, which I which I call our earth brain or our ego brain, uh, because it's it's the me brain and and uh, the the brain that takes care of us here on earth. So so anyway, you know the and what I also found out was there are lots of uh, religions that that teach that we are gods, but here in the West we're not taught that, and we we think it's a really radical idea, even a dangerous idea, and and people are you know that's something you don't say, you know, we are gods, and um, so I but it was just such a you know it was so important that. That I kind of had to overcome my fear of starting the book that way. Um, right. You know what I find funny is that uh, uh, Western religions have no problems with uh, saying, uh, "I am a child of God." Right. I'm, what, we are. What, we are the children of God. Uh, you know, they have no problems with that at all. Uh, but when I bring up the point that, well, what happens to a child? As time passes, they grow up, right? Right. Uh, and and I guess I'm, I, I've I've had quite a few uh, uh, uncomfortable people around me talking like that. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that we, one that one can get you in big trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, let's see. So. We are spiritual beings having a uh, physical experience. Now, oh, geez, I don't know where I want to go with this, Ramon. Huh. Yeah, and we can, you know, we there are three energy systems. It's spiritual energy, which is felt, and it's eternal. And there's physical energy, which is a, which is the, it's like Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage. Right. And, and, that's, and that's what it is. It, it's a physical it's 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 we build things with our mind and and we build them to, to have you know to have this experience and and the mind is the the communicative energy it communicates between people and also within ourselves within our within our bodies the the cells of our bodies have minds and the heart we now uh, has we Leading researchers believe that the heart is a mind of a type, or it has mind energy, it's mind cells, right. and so um, we're, we're, we're the, the reality just exists on many different levels. Uh, it's kind of repeated at, at various stages, like like atoms and, and turn into to uh, solar systems, and they have the same shape. Right, they're just different sizes. Yeah. So, so what's your what's your opinion on uh, the whole holographic universe theories? Uh, are you familiar with that? Well, yes. Uh, I, I'm not sure I know how to. That that's something that's really difficult to talk about, and I not that I know that much uh, about it anyway. Um, I, it's it's an intriguing concept, and and. Um, what? And everything, and I, and I think, and what what makes me think there's a lot of validity to it is that reality is seems to be circular. We, you know, from a left 
the right brain sees the circular nature of reality, and the left brain is linear, and so it sees the li- the linear parts of reality. And we tend to see, because we're so left brain dominant, we tend to think in terms of uh, things get so small they, they no longer exist. Uh, that's the one end of the spectrum, and the other end is is so l- large and encompasses everything. But there there must but that's the linear view of reality. So what is the circular view? Well, you know, that's way beyond my ability to right. comprehend. But from what I see, I, I think there must be a circular nature. And so if you go get smaller and smaller, maybe it pops out The everything is it's all there. Right, right. I mean, yeah. again, this is so difficult to talk about. Yeah, I, 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 I understand. Yeah, I understand you completely. There, it is a, a definite, definitely a hard concept to uh, put into words. I mean, I, I, I bring it up because of, of there's so much out there now. Uh, you know, with all the quantum theories and and the holographic universes and. And, uh, you know, when you take all of these different things and start overlaying them on each other, uh, you can you can almost get a glimpse of of something that looks like it works uh, as far as uh, being a, a, you know, wow, this is uh, this is where we're at. This is what what we're experiencing right here. And uh, but anyways, it's definitely a, a slippery fish to try to grab. And uh, especially to put into to articulate in an articulate manner that gets the full meaning across. Uh, yeah, that's the thing I have to write about. Like I told you when I started, I wrote this book because I couldn't express myself very well verbally. You know that that that's a good question for a blog or something, or more than a blog. Right. But uh, yeah. Uh, and so, into, into your second chapter, you call that parts, holes, and holons. What is a holon? Well, a holon is a word that was coined to reflect the fact that there's more than a, just a hole and a part. Uh, that every hole is also a part of some greater hole, and every part is also a whole in itself relative to its parts. And so some people were having trouble describing, you know, saying a whole because they knew a whole was also a part. And when they would say part, you know, in their discussions, they would think, well, that's not the right word because, you know, this is also a whole. It just depends on your perspective. So the word whole on was coined to reflect the fact that every whole is a part of something and every part is is also a whole. And there's this nested nature of reality and, and it gets and that's kind of a linear aspect of something that again is, is circular. Every line can be bent around and turned into a circle and and uh, so it, it Every every is so far pretty much we found that every part has every time they get to the smallest part. Let me put it this way: every time the scientists get to the smallest part, they they find that there's some the more, when they start investigating it that it there's something inside. Right. And so that's that's part of this this uh, nature of reality where every hole is. A Everything's a whole on, hmm. and and, and uh, <clears throat> there, every whole has four parts. It has an interior and an exterior, and the interior tends to be hidden. And it has a individual component and a collective component. So everything's. Um, a part of something, and and uh, and has an in, and, and and also an individual, and and it has an interior and an exterior. That's that's the very least, the most fundamental nature of wholeness. Of course, it can uh, mm. get very much more complex from there. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Yes. 
Uh, well, we oh, and so the point, so let me, yeah, there, there's actually this point, maybe several points po pointing that out, but the left brain sees, uh, again, the, the brain is dividing up reality into two components, and the left brain is showing us the interiors of holons, and it shows us the individual nature of holons, or that's its focus. The right brain shows us the exteriors of holons and the collective nature of holons. And so, for example, uh, right brain people who are, are most liberals, for example, are tend to be more interested in the cultural nature, uh, the cult the, uh, of gun of gun laws, for example. The right brain people, because they they see the collective, they're more concerned with what happens. To people because of the guns and the the left brain part of us which is focused on the individual and taking care of the individual says well hey I, you know, I need to, to defend myself I need a gun to, to do that so we have these two you know we all have these two sides of the brain advising us in these two two uh, these two ways of looking at things <laughs> Wow wow yep it's that is that is so right on so we have uh, burned up this first hour already, Ramon. Yeah. I believe that. It flew by. It just goes by really quick sometimes. Uh, you know you're into something really interesting when it flies by like that, though. So, so uh, James, if you would like to share where people can pick up this book at, and uh, have you got anything uh, uh, coming up? Are you speaking anywhere or anything like that? I've been moving, and you know, I've, I've just been doing radio interviews. Uh, so no, I don't have anything scheduled right now. Um, I'm I'm kind of regrouping. Um, oh, okay. Well, so and people can just go to uh, the uh, yeah to well, yeah to buy my book. Uh, uh, it's online at most any place. It's available as an ebook uh, in a couple of different formats. Um, hopefully. You know, you can order order it through your bookstore. You can order it uh, through my website, which is thewholebrainpath.com. Uh, um, it should be available uh, in most anywhere online. Great, great, fantastic. Okay, well, I want to thank everybody for listening to this first segment, and uh, I would urge you, if you are not a member, to uh, hit that join button and help support the 100th Monkey Radio and all that we do, and and have access to those, uh, oh, geez, how many shows we've got now, Ramon? What's this, 240-something or something? No, not that many. This oh, is, one, uh, one, 149, right? Yeah, 149. There we go. 149. I don't know where the two came from. <laughs> yes. Anyways, uh, we love you guys. And uh, we're going to continue this conversation with James Olson on the whole brain path to peace. Right? Also, uh, I think very important to mention, um, make sure uh, we change our times on our live show on True Frequency. So it's now from 5 Pacific time to 7 p.m. Saturday. On Saturdays. On Saturdays. Yes, I. This song is called Be the Change. Inspired by the words of Mahatma Gandhi, who lived for peace and not violence, and told us to be the change we wish to see in the world. Freedom's calling, I feel the fire that's deep inside us. Everybody wants change, but tell me who will guide us. To the leaders that pass away, put up your lighters. It's a beautiful struggle, but it cannot divide us. We're the ones that we've always been waiting for. See yourself in the mirror and open up the door. Walk through it and feel the love to watch your pores. Be the light, life's purpose is to feel joy. Metaphysical, lyrical, setting up the truth. The only one to make change is walking in your shoes. Be the example, don't complain about the news. Making music and serving the world with the loo. Now you can be the same, or you can be the change. 
Thought straight from inside, break through the chains. No one to blame, nothing to prove. You create your reality, it's up to you. Be the change that you want to see in the world. I got me live for peace. Aspire to be. So I'm on the fights for the beliefs. Like Martin Luther King. Aspire to be. Of that love, that light. Like Christ, this life for the moment in need. And if you believe in Jehovah, Allah, Buddha, Christian love to me. So yearns for peace in a world that's flooded with war. History's littered with body scar, trying to settle the score to maintain an archaic platform of power and greed. People fight for land out of survival and need. So I'm killing my television and I'm planting a seed to fill my head with knowledge that I'm seeing receive. Due to the media propaganda, killing my creed. Oh, what don't kill me make me stronger, feeling straight when I bleed. Fight for interest and forwards attached to the feet. They try to sell you anything in this world, nothing for free. Land air, fire, and water, they keep up in the ante while the anti proletariat told the powers to be. But we keep fighting, survive. And they thrive and recycle and rhyme and we constantly incline and we see through the lion and blind. They tactically keep trying to keep you from asking the why. Change that you wanna see in the world. I got me live for peace. Aspire to be. So I'm on the fights for the beliefs like Martin Luther King. Aspire to be. Of that love, that light, like crying. This light for the moment of need. And if you believe in Jehovah, Allah, Buddha, Christians love to me. We find solutions, different possibilities, creating organizations. Like aspire to be inspiring young minds to see Building life skills, nurturing creativity Fulfilling the youth's basic needs Listening actively, teaching the tools to succeed Positive role models, we plant the seed The roots drink the water which feed the trees Someone help me, giving back is my responsibility Be the change